Good morning, viewers. We have a panel discussion today, and the topic is common errors in English. Today, we have with us on the show Mr. A. J. Harish Kumar. He is working as student professor of English at Government Degree College, Amrabad. Dr. Nancy Serena Madam, she is from Kamshut of College Education, Hyderabad. Dr. E. Srinivas Rao, Assistant Professor of English from Kakate Government College, Hanamkonda, and myself, Dr. T. S. Pravin Kumar from Kakate Government College, Hanamkonda. I think today you are going to enjoy this topic. This appears to be a very simple topic. At the same time, it is a very burning issue, which we face in our daily conversation. As you saw on the screen, the topic of today's discussion, common errors in English. Let's have an overview of what an error is. And we come across a number of terms. Error can be called a mistake or a lapse or a slip or a deviation. And uh, we need to have an idea of what error is in technical terms. Generally, when we look at the word error, dictionary says it means wander, roam, stray. And according to linguist Dulay, and question. They say, errors are the flawed side of the learner's speech or writing. They are these parts of conversation or composition. They deviate from some selected or uh, norm or nature of mature language performance. So this is the definition of what an error is. So before we go into the discussion, let's have an overview of what we are going to discuss. And we use the word common error in the topic. What do you mean by it? Common error is something which we make repeatedly. We do it in spite of uh, repetitions, in spite of uh, corrections. And when we separate or differentiate our learners, we can find two types of learners, an advanced learner and an ordinary learner. And these errors for an advanced learner are simple things. They are unnatural. But for a serious learner, they pose problems. And for an ordinary learner, it is a serious issue. And even at times, advanced learners make mistakes. And what are the reasons? You can find on the screen. And these we are going to discuss. Now, we are going to start the topic, the panel discussion on common errors in English. And we have a team of experts here who have got great experiences in their own field of teaching. And we are very fortunate to have these people on the show. And uh, I request Harish sir to express his opinions about the topic. Good morning, viewers. Thank you, Praveen. The panel has uh, is assembled here to discuss uh, a very general, burning, topical, I mean, ever relevant, unexhausted one, which is about uh, the errors, the mistakes which happen. The mistakes we know inadvertently they happen, not that anyone wants to do it, but uh, due to ignorance, due to unmindfulness, due to uh, carried, carrying over of certain tendencies, because we have heard being used or said like that, we have inherently imbi imbibed those uh, traits in us. So there is every chance, there is every scope, there is a scope that uh, the moment it is uh, recognized as a deviation, a deviant, a deviant is always uh, odd man out and it should be rather selectively picked out and bundled out. <coughs> and this is what we are going to do, each one of us here on the panel <coughs> will be discussing that those aspects. I, for example, will be taking up uh, the phrasal verbs. Ma'am is going to take up uh, the pronunciation, and Srinivasar is going to take up uh, concord, the verb noun agreement. So, in that way, we'll try to uh, pin out, pick up, uh, needle out those issues which uh, really torture or uh, trouble the students. And uh, because of that troublesome, meddlesome nature, we find that they are a favorite pick of the uh, competitive exams. 
no uh, no person who appears for the examination is uh, uh, i mean can avoid all these things and get through this get through the competitive exams so he has he is facing that daunting task that's why we have made it uh, mandatory for ug as well as pg classes because uh, uh, ever we find them uh, just coming in front of us and posing a challenge to us so now when we take up uh, the phrasal <coughs> verbs verbs as we all know occupy the center of uh, the grammar be it uh, spoken or written verb occupies a major chunk of it and uh, not only the activities activities are uh, covered by it but the static things also are shown the state of the affairs the state of the things how they exist is also reflected by a verb uh, but when the combination becomes deadlier deadlier when it uh, may, uh, just uh, attaches itself with a verb verb gets attached gets gets get uh, attached to either to a an adverb or to a preposition and uh, they form a phrase in itself now let us uh, when when we use phrase let us uh, know what phrase means phrase is the third unit second unit of a language the first being the uh, word second is a phrase third one is a clause and then all these form a part of a sentence so clauses phrases itself by definition don't contain the subject uh, they don't come to, uh, contain the subject and the verb so here we will be having a strange concoction of uh, the verb in combination with uh, adverbs uh, verb taken separately will be one thing and when it is in uh, in uh, uh, hand in glove i mean gets attached to preposition it, uh, it takes a different tinge altogether concoction becomes very different from what uh, the mix, mixed elements are we take in the the slide so the phrasal verbs fall in the domain of a grammar as well as vocabulary so their domain is larger one and because they fall in uh, two categories uh, they are languishing in two categories uh, they would be treated as amphibious beings uh, we know amphibians can be comfortable both in land on land and in water so we would describe them like that okay how is sir it's good that you have described the phrasal verbs as amphibious things sure and according to you students have difficulty in uh, tackling with this phrasal verbs yeah yeah definitely in other words we can say that there are some deficiencies in the learning process itself sure so we'll come to the topic again sir but let's ask madam her experiences about the subject yeah so one thing about uh, students like once uh, students uh, get into a college and they start learning english uh, they have many kinds of thoughts about the language itself so one thing is they should understand that we all are second language learners of english we are second language speakers of english and we all learn by making mistakes by making errors so it's nothing to fear about uh, you know when a student make makes mistakes and uh, a teacher has to identify uh, what kind of mistake the student is making and thereby go according to uh, the uh, the notion or the thinking of the students and uh, i believe sir that uh, uh, once we encourage students to speak the language and expose them to the language they will definitely speak good english and they have to overcome that fear that they cannot speak english give them many opportunities give them a platform where they can express themselves and i think the right kind yeah, of opportunities yes, should be given to them given to them given. yeah and uh, uh, sometimes uh, when they make a mistake i think we have to uh, maybe after the session or uh, sometime later we can just bring uh, talk to the student and tell them that this is not the right way and this is the right way so that correction really helps the students and sometimes students are very smart they make self correction 
So when they listen to the teacher, they correct themselves and then they see that they don't repeat the mistake. So my, the, my first uh, point that I would like to make is that mistakes or errors, they are not a big issue at all. Like they are the stepping stones and they will, they will really help the students to gain a lot of confidence and, and in the long run, they will definitely become good speakers. So I... Yes, I, Madam. Nancy, Madam. Your observation about the subject is uh, very excellent. Uh, you have uh, given weightage to the students because uh, generally we think students do mistakes and teachers have to correct. But here we find that the mistakes done by students have to be corrected by themselves. Yeah. And, yeah. So teacher has to facilitate or provide such kind of atmosphere mm -hmm. by which the student will come out with his own uh, rectified things, yes. yeah. finding out his own errors. Yeah. So fine, madam. So yeah. this is a very basic thing which you find in our students in the classrooms. And uh, Srinivas, sir, so we need your uh, opinions yes. about the subject. So when we experience, when we, when we are exposed to the students, actually, we come across a number of uh, mistakes done by the students, actually. As far as spoken conversation is concerned, communication is concerned, we need not, as uh, Nancy Madam said, they may not be taken so seriously because if you go on insisting on mistakes, they students hesitate to learn. Yeah. It's a hurdle for learning actually. And we can privately asking them to come into our own department, we can get them corrected actually. But as far as written communication is concerned, at UG level and PG level, students are expected to speak yeah. on certain situations and write in number of situations. As far as writing skill is concerned, the mistakes are taken very seriously because grammar has got its own uh, this rules and regulations, its own limitations are there. And we find a number of students making mistakes with regard to, they don't know, they are unable to discriminate yes. what is past and what is present, and what kind of helping verbs are to be used in a present situation, what kind of helping verbs are to be used in past situation, they are unable to understand. It's a common mistakes, a mistake done by a number of students in day-to-day -day situation. Now, even after having exposed to English for uh, six or seven years, we find students using is for a plural subject and uh, are for a singular subject. When we are, they are asked to write a paragraph, we come across these kinds of mistakes. So, but that is why it is a very serious area where we have to focus yeah. and educate the students as to how to overcome these mistakes, mistakes. actually. Because this conquered, it is said to be a conquered, it's a grammatical term. There's an agreement between the subject and the verb. And verb should agree with the subject. If the subject happens to be a singular one, what helping verbs are to be used? If the subject happens to be a plural one, what he helping verbs are to be used? It's a very important area where we have to emphasize and focus and enlighten the students. Because after completion of UG, students appear for a number of competitive examinations. If we observe the scheme of uh, competitive examinations, banking service, stop selection commission, or public service commission examinations, we have a number of questions related to this conquered actually, agreement. For example, one of my friends, so most of the students don't know whether it is a singular one or plural one. They tend to make mistakes. It's actually a singular one. And they don't know. Since friends is that, say, they assume that it's a plural subject. And then they try to make use of a plural helping verb actually. This is how we like even either or, neither nor. We find students what kind of helping verb subject is followed by helping verb. What helping verb is to be used, it's a very serious area where we have to, in spoken communication of course we don't insist on them. But when it comes to written communication we have to focus on them and educate them correcting their own mistakes. Yes. It's a very serious yes, area, actually. I would yeah. add here that uh, the younger generation, I think they have taken license or liberties with it. Yes, and yes, they, yes. the more they break the grammar rules, yes. they find that they are more at liberty. And, and the, so much of geniusness is there in that. They can, they can, they can a take new liberties. term has come into focus now, communication skills. skills in have. We are it's trying to insist more rather. on spoken communication yeah. to avoid the, the mistakes and only as to you rightly said make that, them uh, that basic structure is required yes, yes. that's very in important order to communicate actually. whether but to write or yes. to speak basic grammar is required yeah yes, yes, yes. so madam yes. 
this gives rise to a new point that is the process which we apply in our classrooms appears to be somewhat flawed, a flawed learning process. Yes. And here we also see the influence <coughs> of peers on the learners. Mm. And whatever his friend speaks, the student takes it as uh, for granted without finding the accuracy of the language. Sometimes he's very casual. So these things can be rectified when we approach a certain method of teaching that is called a CLT. Yeah. Communicative language teaching, teaching. and uh, linguists may insist on this kind of uh, approach. So, would you like to <coughs> elaborate on this topic, communicative language teaching? How far is it going to fetch <coughs> results in the classroom? In communicative language situations, students are involved actually yeah. Yeah. by adopting different kinds of techniques in the classroom, by group work or yeah. pair work. We can involve the students, and we will also. It's also an opportunity for the students to erase their fear and tension also. Yes. That phobia is there. It is that phobia which is there in the minds of the, the students that uh, hinders in. them to yeah. come forward actually. Yeah. That has to be erased in the classroom. Yeah, the and that can be rectified. Not it's not a very serious issue of course. It depends on the teacher. Yes. The teacher has to adopt his own techniques in the classroom by involving the students. That will help the... And it is also an opportunity. And moreover, our uh, PowerPoint presentations, yes. communicative techniques, they will also... It's also a kind of aid for the students to get exposed to communicative language, language uh, situation. I'd like to add it here will. that yes. uh, let mm. the students uh, I mean, come out with their ideas. Okay. Whatever comes up in their minds, let them speak out. But what I feel, there is a rider there that mm. teach under the uh, supervision of a teacher. Yes, yes. So that it goes doesn't go undetected, <coughs> unchecked. And at a later stage, it can be told like that. The yes. student can be brought here aside and told that this is what you did wrong. So in that way, some correction is needed, yes, some yes. supervision is also needed. Even at UG level also we find students pronouncing the word W-R-I-T as right. R right, yeah. right. right. Yeah. And so why does it occur? J -H -O -N to. For John, they say uh, John. Uh, J H O N, they write. Yes, yes. This I not came mistake. yesterday. Yeah. They yeah. also say I not came yesterday. Yeah. Here, yeah. Uh, we can discuss on the issue. Srinivasar <laughs> used the word right. Hmm. And uh, when we refer to the same word in Telugu, Vrayuta. Mm. Rayuta, yeah. Rayuta. I think MP yeah. influence. So here the important topic is the influence on of Mother L1, tongue L1 on Mother tongue L2. influence. Yeah. So will, madam. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes mm. they actually make word to word translation. Yes. yes, yes. Yeah. So that Grammar is very common. Yeah. So here these are some of the factors. The factors which make students make these errors. Mm. The first one is L1 and L2. So if L1 is strong and if L1 doesn't interfere with L2 in a negative manner, then there is no scope for errors. So when we make a study of the uh, <coughs> techniques used in the classrooms and the background of the students, we come across a number of things. We have external factors, internal factors. External factors we know because uh, since we teach students coming from rural backgrounds sure. with a different social and cultural background, environmental, mm -hmm. so these play as uh, external factors. And the internal factors, it depends on the psychology of the students. Because whatever we teach, the student is not in a position to understand. It may also be called psycholinguistic. Yes, sir. That uh, is related to cognitive. So when you use a word apple, the student may have a different image in his mind. Then there is a scope for making errors. Yeah. So taking those things into consideration, what kind of steps or what kind of improvements can we suggest for our learners? Because uh, books, or available material gives a number of, of things, things are available. but our experience adds something yeah. more than more, more, more to it. Yeah. I would just like to add one point, sir. Yes, so we, we, we were just talking about CLT, wherein we have a number of activities like debate, group discussion, role play, etc. So um, we can also, like uh, my humble suggestion is, we can also have uh, activities related to grammar, because uh, we see that students they create uh, deviant structures. And to avoid all these things, like to make grammar more interesting, we can either group them or you, we can also divide them into pairs and give them grammar exercises so that they can discuss with their peers and come out with the right answer. So I think this would uh, definitely help them because I tried it and uh, I found the result to be very interesting and they really came out of those goofs that they were actually making. Yeah. Yes. And one more important thing is here, the most important aspect that we have to take uh, bear in mind is for learning a non-native language English, exposure, exposure and interaction is 
very important actually. They should be exposed to English language. And the classroom and teacher, these are the only sources where they get an opportunity to interact with the language. Yeah. Yes. And that is why teacher's role is very <coughs> crucial. Yeah. And it is the teacher who has to involve the students uh, with different kinds of techniques and strategies to erase the phobia that is inherent in the minds of the students. That's very important actually. And interaction, there is an inhibition in the minds of the students. They hesitate to come forward. Mm. A kind of intimacy, friendship with the students is also very important mm. because teacher, it is uh, not teacher-centered. The yeah. process of teaching should be learner-centered actually, student-centered. Then it's a very helpful method for making them avoid these mistakes actually. Yes, oh. yes, yes. sir. The students uh, should be given <coughs> a, I mean, prime slot, prime place in the learning. And of course, as I've said that uh, it should be monitored and guided, corrected periodically by the teacher. And because of structure is like that, our study structure, our course structure is like that, that uh, mostly in the olden, oh, I mean, olden concept, old concept, it was like that. Uh, teacher always used to give the, I mean, ready-made things to them. Uh, but nowadays, the focus has totally changed with the changing uh, concepts. Uh, the approach also has altered and uh, the teacher is more a sort of facilitator, <coughs> just a, a moderator, just an onlooker and uh, in that way the changing concepts are definitely add on to our uh, changing roles also and we be mindful as teachers and give the prime place to the students also what I feel like. Right. Yes sir. That's a very good uh, input, yeah. and uh, when we use, when we refer to the word phobia, phobia is not is only is not related to the student itself. It is related to the teacher also. Teacher, yes. So without uh, two hands put into the it, it will not produce a good sound. Yes. So phobia here may sometimes be referred to teachers also. When the teacher is not perfect in grammar, yeah, yeah, right. then the problem arises. So as Madam has said. We are supposed to give good exercises to the students. But let it not be monotonous. Yeah. Let the student learn something from it. Let it be natural. So when we add CLT to this exercise of grammar, then it will come out with good results. And that is very important because our student has a, have a very casual approach in their day-to-day -day life, in their communication, speech, writing, and everyday activity. They don't take grammar into serious consideration. Look at a student of mathematics. If you give him a formula, he will definitely try to understand it and try to evolve another kind of a parallel formula to it. But the same has to be done with our students also. Let them come out with their own structure. Let them come out with their own concord, mm. which is acceptable as per the available norms. So it may, it may, give, it may give good uh, results uh, and it may it, uh, reduce the number of errors in the sentence structure used by students at the same time the facilitators also mm -hmm. so this is a very important thing. Well, I, I add a point here yes sir so today what happens actually <coughs> students are in the olden days students were exposed to grammar books alone yeah. only a few exercises were given at that time but we can do one thing to avoid <laughs> these kinds of mistakes actually student we can give you a structure a structure a day and there is nothing wrong we are okay insisting much on communicative language teaching. It's of course it is there. By m with much emphasis on communicative language teaching in the modern days, they are neither learning, they are neither able to co relate themselves to communicative language teaching nor grammar translation method or something like that. Earlier it was there of course, grammar translation method was adopted and they did not get an opportunity to learn. Mm. Bilingual techniques can also be adopted for erasing these kinds of phobia. There is nothing wrong because mother tongue influence is very much among the students. That's also a very helpful, giving at least a structure a day. We can ask them to write on the board at least a, one structure a day. By that what happens in course of three years uh, of course, they will get equipped with all structures that we come across in the communication. And moreover, communication skills are not different from grammar. There is a misconception among most of the viewers actually. How can communication be there without do and does? Is it possible to communicate something without be forms, have forms and do forms? They are part of grammar. Communication is also part of grammar actually. Grammar is part of communication. If they are good at grammar, if you are able to overcome that fear and phobia, they can easily communicate. It's not a problem. But it is the teacher how to discriminate.
who plays a crucial role there. Coming to the word phobia, as you have mentioned, sir, uh, in our own government colleges, we see that, uh, uh, especially in rural areas, when we uh, interact with students in English, uh, we see that the student gives an answer in Telugu immediately. Yes. We ask the question in English, yes, and yes. he or she gives the answer in Telugu. And then it, uh, it's a difficult task for the teacher to make sure that the student makes a sentence or constructs a sentence in English. So at that time, they really need us and uh, we need to help them out. And as Sir said, we need to uh, see that we take the help from uh, L1, that is the mother tongue, and see that uh, the student formulates uh, a structure and utters those utterances as well as conveys the answer or the message. Uh, this is uh, uh, one thing that I would like to suggest. And uh, uh, another problem uh, with uh, uh, our colleges is most of the times uh, students get exposed to English only in the English period. The remaining yes. times, like you have other subjects, and uh, after the classroom they discuss in their mother tongue uh, or they, they communicate in their mother, mother tongue to their friends and at home also there is no uh, English language being used. So this also causes a hindrance sometimes and we need to encourage students like how best they can listen to uh, English and get exposed to the language and come out of the errors which they are usually making. So this is what right. I, yeah. the I would like to add here activity based activity. that uh, mm -hmm. as Madam has rightly said mm -hmm. when a student is put, uh, posed a question he generally knows the answer. Yeah. He, uh, he can tell it in his mother tongue. But the problem arises when he wants to, he is supposed to speak in English. Yes. At that juncture, we, f we find that, uh, uh, mother, that bilingual method, as has been pointed out, bilingual method really works up and uh, it is accorded permission, no less an institution than IFLU, permits it, yes. it encourages it. So why, why we teachers have been adopting it? We have, I for instance <coughs> come from a very rural place. And uh, I, uh, I, I myself ha was not very good at uh, the vernacular. I learnt it, I, I encourage them and I give the substitutes in English so that they, when they are comfortable in their vernacular, let them also know the substitute. So what is not correct and what is correct should be known, kept side by side. Let them take a choice. At the right time, if not now, the things will flower up at a later stage. And that's what a teacher's role is just to oversee the development. Just let the process be started, let the spark be ignited, and uh, the fires will burn. Yes, adopting yes, bilingual method is not a wrong thing. Even so, eminent professors correct. from it's, it's FLU very, yeah, yeah. have insisted have on been approved. But judicious right. use of... Uh, judicious one. Judicious that, 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 is, that is very important. Important. The first thing important. is, yeah. when you ask a question, and if the student gives an answer in his own mother tongue, sure. exact answer, that means he has a knowledge of the subject. He understood. He understands. The only thing is he is unable to express, express it, come out with it. But let it be up to a certain stage. More influence of L1 also may lead to other kind of results. Yeah. So uh, too much interference of L1 also is not uh, acceptable. Accepted. So it is up to a certain stage. And after that, let the student focus on L2. But the problem which we come across in rural colleges, madam, the thing is, some students are weak at their own L1. Yeah. They have their own problem with their mother tongue. Yes. They cannot frame certain structures in their own mother tongue. So this has a direct influence on L2. So this has become a problem. So differences in L1 and L2 is a result of uh, errors. Errors occur because of the differences. Difference if he is perfect is with mother tongue, he will try to adjust to the new language. New language. Yeah. But if he is not perfect, then the problem arises. He is in no man's land. So that's why we come across number of errors in English. And when we focus on certain areas, which our students need to uh, rectify themselves. So we have, uh, uh, with, uh, Harish sir is going to present on uh, phrasal verbs. And the madam is going to focus on the pronunciation part of it. Because till now we have dealt with uh, the structure and the writing part of it. But the pronunciation also is very important. If the student is unable to understand what we pronounce, then the problems arise. And regarding concord, it is very important because without <coughs> agreement, it is very difficult to produce a sentence. So, I would like you to focus on these items yes. for a few minutes for the benefit of our students. We'll start with Madam on the area of pronunciation. pronunciation. Okay. So, pronunciation, uh, students make uh, it's a very important aspect because 
uh, it's a part of communication and it is something to do with uh, the production part so you produce words which make sentences and these sentences have to be received by the other person and understood so that you may you may go with the right communication so I would just like to highlight on few words because there are an team number of words which can be taken into consideration but because this is a panel discussion I would just like to highlight on few words so uh, we have uh, words like uh, determine and uh, usually mispronounced as uh, determine so this has to be pronounced as determine and uh, more often the second word is pronounced as asthma by many people but has to be pronounced as asthma and the third word uh, is ballet uh, mispronounced by many as uh, ballet they have that they include the T but T is silent this is this can happen because of uh, you know not getting exposed to the word we have a similar word if you remember uh, the word depot this word is you know people know about it and by word of mouth you listen to it and very happily you pronounce it correctly there also the T is silent so the same thing applies over here and you have some words which have which are uh, having silent letters um, mostly mispronounced as uh, plum plumber but it is plumber and the the next word uh, goes by the spelling most most of your students pronounce it as per the spelling they pronounce it as environment but it has to be pronounced as environment where R is silent the next one a very interesting word uh, you also have a very famous uh, sweet shop with this name it is almond house L is silent over here and a very common mistake which students really make is the pronunciation of the word uh, women so women is pronounced as woman by many so we have to rectify this and pronounce it as women and something very interesting to always think about and eat is the pizza so again mis mispronounced as pizza by many they go by the spelling but it has to be pronounced as pizza and uh, sometimes often when we go to uh, tours or excursions we just take uh, rooms in hotels and those rooms are called as sweet though they are the spelling is s-u-i-t-e most of them again they they go by the spelling and pronounce it as suit or something like that but this has to be pronounced as sweet we have some uh, words wherein uh, there is a problem with students again not just students but all second language speakers and learners uh, the, the word is data so again they go by the spelling some people mispronounce it as data so which has to be pronounced as data and you have the word cure it is not cure R is silent over there and then in the same way very often we, uh, we teachers of uh, English listen to uh, students being uh, uh, pronouncing the word as poor I come from a poor family so again the R is silent over here it is poor and uh, when we go to secretariat uh, or uh, some very big places we have the chamber of CM and deputy CM with the word has to be pronounced as chamber and uh, you have some silent letters very quickly I'll go through it L is silent for the word palm and you have psalm which is a poem and here you have P and L as silent and most of us uh, also uh, read uh, like uh, our own uh, sun signs and one such sun sign is Gemini mostly mispronounced as Gemini and then you have uh, fla <coughs> flower uh, you have the same uh, same pronunciation for both the flower which blossoms in the garden as well as the flower from which you bake a bread so the pronunciation for both these words is flower and we have uh, some uh, uh, silent uh, uh, we have some words uh, which begin with the quick a uh. it is not as per the spelling so usually uh, people mispronounce it as oven but it has to be pronounced as oven it is not onion but it is onion it is not occasion but it is occasion so the schwa or the inverted E is the quick E sound, the uh sound. So 
and the recurring r the r which has uh, which is not supposed to be pronounced at all carrier it is not carrier it is carrier wrapper it is not wrapper it is um, this again is a commonly mispronounced word <coughs> beer they say it is beer near, uh, near it is near and car they say it is just car so here you have all the silent r's at the end of the word and hence it is called as recurring r a very common mistake which students make which i have heard many a times is she is proudish in nature so we don't have any such word like proudish children it is only proud or the past tense of it that is pride yeah. so madam has collected a good number of words which we generally use in our day to day conversation but which we are not aware of the exact pronunciation that is very important as we teachers as facilitators <coughs> if we are aware of all these kind of changes then students will definitely learn the correct pronunciation of them and the for this pronunciation a basic study also is important we cannot simply go and pronounce these words we need to have a background of the words for correct pronunciation and there's a very good observation madam so this area we need to focus and we need to improve in order to make our students uh, well versed with the language and uh, regarding phrasal verbs they are very important these days uh, uh, hari sir can you point out certain words which our students need very much yeah run, run out so we find that phrasal verbs i have already told that uh, phrasal verbs make a combo and the effect is uh, fantastic which is unimagined a, a near, new, new concoction comes up so for example break we all know and in we know but break in means something different actually barge into something to enter without permission the thieves break into houses and we have break down the same verb same verb break is there break is there and down another combination there another element particle is added and you have break down the break down car breaks down it fails down it uh, stops functioning so we see how the words are co combine combining and uh, different effects are being created so what i suggest is that if you want to be very good uh, at english if you want to impress people you will have to make a good study an in depth uh, knowledge of uh, uh, phrasal verbs always is a plus point for the person and also because of their complexity they are added uh, they are uh, generally asked in the competitive exams and we have uh, a list of uh, like brush up and brush off we know so we uh, students generally exam going students they need to brush up their knowledge at the last hour quick review of the things brush off is something very different you brush up of the allegations somebody alleges something and you say no it's not like that totally i don't agree with you its allegations are brushed aside put under the carpet like see uh, the way they are they are combining is very uh, different and call in and call on we have uh, we call we call in on some <coughs> persons uh, we, we called in the police sometimes when uh, uh, disputes arise police is called in and an important functionary calls on someone he visits someone pays a visit to someone someone that's called as call on and uh, we have check in and check out it is easy to understand we check in at a place and then we leave the place check out <coughs> so in that way uh, we will have something important like rake in and rake up uh, <coughs> we rake in we are people I mean, generally when ill gotten money is there they rake in that uh, fabulous pe people who have lot of ill gotten wealth they just rake in money we say he rakes in money so and so rakes in money well we don't have to use uh, words i mean names there people, some people are there who rake in money and rake up is there totally where in uh, issue is just blown to pieces it's raked up the issue is raked up i mean started <coughs> from the beginning and uh, i mean allegations were raised and last we will have write off and uh, write up uh, write off is something uh, to wave off as we have said uh, we we know that uh, uh, when government writes off the loan of the farmers farmers had taken loans and uh, it was written off uh, many many governments do it and uh, 
we have a small write up we write something about it and it becomes a good uh, piece of information we have a write up like that so i would uh, uh, request and i would advise the learners users rather to be uh, exposed to these uh, phrasal verbs so that it adds a new charm vibrancy to your uh, speech and writings and it becomes better right thank you sir that's a good uh, uh, expression or presentation on this topic phrasal verbs and uh, i think uh, students will be able to understand this topic at an advanced level yeah, sure. because unless they know the basics of grammar and uh, vocabulary they cannot reach that but this is very important because uh, though they belong to government uh, sector from rural areas we can even expect uh, germs from the students yeah. yes there are we are there are students who become top officials and for such kind of students to make a document or to read a document these things are very essential okay. i think it's called so, as flowering of the language yes so let's these phrasal verbs become a part of our daily conversation yeah, so that they become well versed with the subject and uh, regarding the basics of uh, language i need to invite to focus once again on the structure of the as i have just said concord is a very important aspect as far as grammar is concerned and we can take up the pronouns actually with regard to pronouns whether whether it is a singular one or plural one if we take up a singular subject like he she it or any other general third person singular most of the students i have come across saying that what is third person singular number they are confined to he she it third person singular number sir not they they alone are not third person singular numbers yes. any singular noun can be a third person singular noun and in any name all names of persons names of places names of things can be taken into the come under the category of third person singular number when a third person singular number is taken for example what follows next it's followed by is in the present situation it's followed by was in the past situation if you take a plural noun pronoun or noun for example it's followed by are in the present and were in the past for example if we take he is a businessman she is a doctor swati is silent is is followed by an adjective this can also be added later helping verbs be forms do forms and have forms they play a crucial role as far as be forms are concerned for example if we take is is can be followed by a noun is can be followed by he is a student member they are all nouns actually he is silent silent is an adjective he is calm calm is an adjective he is coming verbing form helping verb can be followed by either a noun or an adjective or ing form of the verb in the present situation same thing occurs in the past situation also these are the same thing apply even to the plural nouns also we you they or any plural noun they are followed by are in the present situation were in the past situation and or can be followed by either an adjective or a noun or a ing form they are silent they are calm they are noisy these are all adjectives actually they are coming they are learning english followed by ing form they are members of the club they are students of the same college we are all members of the club they are followed by noun forms yes. this is how we have to emphasize on them and make it very clear that they are followed by either an adjective or a noun form or ing form so that uh, they start learning building up an idea as to how to overcome mistakes in english because it's a very common thing uh, true to the spirit of the topic common errors in english it's a very important area where we have to emphasize and uh, practice it requires a lot of practice for the students discrimination with this discrimination of uh, uh, topics actually we can also make them learn it's a very crucial area we have to focus for avoiding errors and overcoming errors also yes sir so regarding the pronunciation part madam uh, these days all colleges have uh, language laboratories so it, i think it's better to encourage students to be regular visitors to the lab, lab so at least they can learn the pronunciation part of it madam 
So, as uh, a representative of CC, you have been uh, inspecting a number of colleges. So, what is your opinion about the status of affairs in the colleges? Are the students able to? <laughs> yeah, as a part of TSKC as well as in, uh, ELL, that is English Language Lab, uh, we have a good number of colleges who have this facility. And uh, uh, like, uh, uh, as, uh, 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 like we have a very dynamic uh, coordinator uh, who is looking after TSKC and uh, we have teachers in our colleges who are taking classes uh, apart from the regular curriculum uh, to really strengthen the students and see that they really communicate well. So they are definitely classes and communication skills, sir. At the same time, the English language lab, I think we have uh, uh, the soft, uh, soft, a particular software being in, installed in colleges and uh, which uh, specifically uh, emphasizes on uh, the pronunciation aspect too. So uh, colleges are provided, most of the colleges and especially the uh, well-established colleges are provided with uh, English language labs. And uh, uh, the colleges which... Uh, uh, are uh, like upcoming colleges, they too, like uh, uh, it's on the anvil uh, to provide uh, all these facilities mm -hmm. to them, sir. So uh, maybe in, in a very short time, uh, these colleges will be equipped with ELLs. That's nice, madam. Mm -hmm. So definitely these ELLs are going to help our students uh, to face the national level tests like uh, TOEFL and this uh, GMAT and, uh, where they are supposed to take this uh, audio tests and also written tests and these errors generally the examiners are going to focus on these kind of errors and generally when we look at the <coughs> types of errors madam yes uh, sir so we come across number of things in our syllabi and also in the competitive examinations and uh, I think it is better we focus on these areas. The first one is subject to verb agreement that is conquered. And the second one is verb forms. These are very important. And uh, singular plural noun endings. Yes. Because uh, without having this knowledge of uh, nouns, and which is uh, a countable noun, which is a non-countable noun, which ends with S, this is a basic information which a student needs to have. At the same time, articles. Because these days... We repeat the same question number of times, and the student does the mistake number of times. Even with regard to prepositions. Prepositions, yes. yeah. Prepositions uh, uh, needs good, uh, regarding to good uh, attention with reference to location mm -hmm. and place and yeah. direction. These things are very important because generally we come across words like discuss. Yeah. We use the word about. Yes, yes. Sometimes it is correct depending on the situation. Enter we use into. Sometimes it is correct depending on the situation. But generally we don't use these uh, prepositions with these kind of words. So these basic things are very important to make our students and uh, don't underestimate our students because these government students are going to become uh, top officials and even students from the so-called prestigious convent schools. They may not uh, compete with our students yeah. and uh, yeah. the onus lies in the hands of each and every English teacher yeah. and it is a very great opportunity to be a part of the panel discussion here and that uh, we have to thank uh, the CC of uh, Com Commissioner Madam for giving us this opportunity, opportunity to participate here and to come out with our own experiences and we also should thank uh, uh, Nancy Madam for making uh, this program a part of the schedule uh, which is very important for a teacher because uh, we come on TV as individual uh, presentations, but a panel discussion, uh, which is very lively, yes. presents good results. Mm -hmm. And this is very beneficial to our students uh, who view, watch this program. And they may take uh, some leave out of, out of it. They will get some, some kind of inspiration. So one day I have to be a member of the panel discussion mm -hmm. or a member of a top official uh, yeah. brand. So these things are definitely going to fetch us in the days to come. And I think this kind of discussion will definitely continue in the next sessions on a different topic. Uh, today we have focused on errors in English and the next time when we meet here we will try to focus on another topic which is very important to the students. And uh, finally, before we conclude this program, uh, since we have focused on these areas, syllabus also plays a very important role here. So what about the design of the textbooks? What kind of information should be uh, put in the textbooks so that it, can, it, it will become some kind of uh, uh, beneficiary or beneficial activity to the student. That is very important because the only thing the student has uh, uh, as a resource is the textbook. So we need to focus on the designing of the syllabus also, syllabi. 
and uh, let's make it a part of our daily curriculum and teaching activity. So I would like you to focus within the limitations of time on the designing of the textbook regarding this issue. The textbook. Sure. Yeah. Yes, earlier we had a common course syllabus actually. Yes. It was that there was no problem. <coughs> now textbooks are designed by each university now. They are preparing textbook according to the needs of uh, their own needs actually. I think at least the and board a of common studies platform should take, is required. take up the issue. A yes. common board platform is required for preparing a textbook should, uh, actually. Should be sensitized. So that, that and if they take up the issue. It is the dying need of the hour. Yes. We are mere teachers and we take it to the classrooms. But it is a course designer, yes, the board yes. of studies, board who of have studies. to frame up. So one thing is sure, madam. Yeah. So the main uh, outcome of whatever is being designed for students should be that they should internalize the grammar structures. Yes. So that is the core point, and lot of exposure should be given to the language. That is what I feel. So we have come with uh, a good number of inputs uh, for enriching our students with uh, language, uh, facilitating them not to do the mistakes again and again. And uh, we need to focus on certain areas. The discussion uh, gives uh, a list of ideas. One thing is we have to identify the students, who is an advanced student, who is a weak student. And we should try to substantiate or supplement him with these kind of ideas. Just focus on definitely, the problem areas. Yes, Where definitely the these ideas which are presented are going to bring good results among the students. And students will definitely come out in the area of language in flying colors. Thank you very much for your time and your participation. Let's hope we'll meet again with a different kind of topic. Sure. Thank you so much. It was much. a pleasant experience. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.